Chastain will take it. Go! It's not about opportunities anymore, but that they can be celebrated for their accomplishments in the same way that our great male athletes are celebrated. Somehow, in some way, we impacted people's hearts. Somehow we kind of sparked people to dream big, to go after big things. This fundamentally changed the position of women's athletics in a way nothing that ever happened before did. The United States women's national soccer team accomplished so much in the 1990s, winning two world championships and Olympic gold. But the journey wasn't easy. Along the way, through all the struggles and all the obstacles placed in their way, the women persevered and changed the face of women's sports, perhaps forever. They had come a long way since they first gathered as a group, an unknown bunch of girls ready to take on the world. Well, the first national team started in 85. Prior to that, it was just everyone meet in Washington, D.C., try out. All of a sudden, you're the women's national team. See you later. I didn't know what, anything about what is a national team. Didn't even think to ask. The first training camp was at CW Post University in Long Island, and they were housed in the same dorm as a high school cheerleading camp. You know, so every morning, they were waking up to, you know, two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? And it certainly wasn't them. Underappreciated, without a hint of tradition, the women were forced to build a program on their own. Ironically, it took an Irish national to instill a sense of good old American patriotism. With Mike Ryan as our coach, he has a whole history of what it means to play for your national team. Apparently he felt we weren't being uh, patriotic enough and didn't understand the full meaning of what it meant to be a national team player. So after one of the practices, he had us sit down and sing the national anthem. <laughs> and we started out, we weren't singing it like with enough gusto, so we'd have to start over until everyone was screaming at the top of their lungs. And then we all gathered around in a room and they said, if you got chosen, you would be going to Italy. Next thing you know, we're the women's national team. We got uniforms that were hand-me-downs from the men's team that were pretty beat up. They were huge. Our sweats were like purple and green. We basically didn't look like the national team, that's for sure. Went to Italy, got our butts kicked, came home. We were all excited and we thought, wow, soccer might really be going somewhere. If the team was to go somewhere, the U.S. Soccer Federation felt a change at the top was necessary. So in 1986, they hired Anson Dorrance as the new head coach. Dorrance had begun to develop a rich women's soccer tradition at the University of North Carolina and immediately made a decision that would forever change women's soccer. He cut a bunch of older players and then brought this young crew in to build the team around. It was very controversial because we were cutting a lot of players that were outstanding players. Anson invited Julie Foudy, Mia Hamm, myself, Joy Fawcett, and Linda Hamilton to join the women's national team. We had no clue what it was about or what an honor it would be. When Anson came to me when I was 16 and said, do you want to play on the national team? I tried to get out of it. <laughs> I'm like, what's that? I got to get home. I don't have any more money. He's like, Julie, do you understand what I'm asking you? I'm talking about the national team. She finally called and said, mom, send me money. We're going to China next week. Christine had to ask her parents for permission. I was a junior in high school. I wasn't even going to go. I don't want to go away from home. I was your little homebody, homesick person. They didn't even have their driver's license. And these little girls come in, and they're scared to death to be out on the field. They're totally intimidated until the whistle blows, and then they just start rocking and rolling and tearing things up. Led by their energetic young core, the U.S. women began to improve. But even as future captain Carla Overbeck and other new world-class players joined the team, the women were still considered second-class citizens. There wasn't a lot of recognition in terms of what women's soccer was about. We played for $10 a day in per diem. We would travel around, and it, and it wasn't um, first-class accommodations. Remember I sat down on one plane, the seats are broken, and we start to take off, and this brown stuff starts dripping out of the air conditioner. 